There's an interesting kind of question, especially aimed at the C-suite, of how might we accelerate collaboration and learning, especially collaborative learning in the workplace. And the curious thing is that I get asked this as much in Asia, where I spend a good share of my life, as I do in the United States. And I usually tell them a story that they find incredible because it has, appears to have nothing to do with the C-suite, and yet it has everything to do with the C-suite. Maui has never had in its history any junior or world-class champion surfers. The world-class surfers always come from the North Shore on Oahu, never Maui. And then an amazing singularity. There were five kids, aged 16 at the time. Not one, but all five became all world champions. How could this have happened? Never before in the history of Maui. And then out of the blue, this happens. The beautiful story started with Dusty when he was 16. And his dad said, Dusty, what do you want to become? And Dusty looked at his dad incredulously and said, what do you mean, Dad? I'm going to become a professional surfer. And his dad, being responsible, said, you know, Dusty, that's not a career, that's a, that's, that's a hobby. Uh, and Dusty said, no, it's not. It, it's going to be my career. Because I'm going to pull my four best buddies in, and the five of us are going to become this amazing learning community. You may even call it a community of practice. That's not the terms that Dusty would have used, <laughs> but it's what I used. <laughs> what these kids did is they first said, you know, we're going to go out and we're going to get these beautiful videos of all the past world surfers, class surfers, and we're going to study these, these videos, step by step by step, frame by frame by frame. Every time we kind of see a new move, we're going to dash down the hill and try it out. Now here's where things started to get interesting. They were always kind of competing with each other and fiercely collaborating with each other. And they'd run down the hill with their own video cameras and they would video each other trying out this particular move on this particular wave. And then they would dash back up the hill in the living room and start to paw over the videos that they took of each other and then collaboratively deconstruct each move that each of them had actually made, and then they dashed down the hill again and tried it out again. And so what they used some very interesting video tapes, video tools, to be able to reflect as a group on each other, because often they would see each other do things that the individual couldn't see himself. And that started getting them going to become really, really good. They started going to the hot spots around the world. They could start to now compete and have these rich conversations looking at each other, working as a collaborative group, but also analyzing the moves that their competitors were doing, but again, collaboratively constructing a story for what their competition was doing, even though they were competing with each other. They said, you know, we've got to have new ideas. Let's look at adjacencies. Now, this is an aha for the corporate world. They say, let's look at how people are doing other things closely allied to us that we may be able to learn from and repurpose. Windsurfing, snowboarding, skiing, mountain biking. They would even look at, in the extreme cases, motocrossing. And in fact, the last time I checked in was Dusty. He had just gotten another world championship from an idea called the Superman move on a motorcycle which is totally unbelievable, if you, unless you follow motocrossing, um, but it's where you actually let the bike get out ahead of you, uh, and you hold on to the back and you fly behind the back of the bike, okay? This is not something for amateurs to try. He repurposed this, this move over here, which is already pathological in the motorcycle realm, into the surfboard realm, and basically won the event the next move. <laughs>